If you don't want to throw money away building a PC, you need to avoid some of the CPUs I'm about to show you. Today I'll walk through three processors you really should stay away from and three that I recommend instead. If you're watching, make sure you're subscribed and drop a like if this helps. Let's start. First CPU that you should avoid is the Intel Core i5-14400F. The i5-14400F doesn't offer a meaningful improvement over the i5-13400F. It performs almost identically to the 13400F but it tends to run hotter. Because of that, and because the 13400F is cheaper and more efficient, I don't recommend the 14400F. I'll explain the 13400F in the buy section, but the takeaway here is simple. The 14400F is unnecessary. Second CPU that you should avoid is the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. I get it. A lot of people absolutely adore the 7800X3D, and I'm a fan in many ways too. But the short version is this. It's overrated rated in today's market. It used to be considered the best gaming processor. And yes, it's still a very capable chip, but newer CPUs have arrived and prices haven't stayed friendly. In practice, many owners of X3D chips don't actually use the parts of the chip that make them special. So unless you're in a specific use case, the 7800X3D makes less sense than it used to. Let me explain how the X3D lineup works. X3D CPUs are built around massive L3 cache amounts. That big cache is what drives the gaming advantage, but only in games that are very CPU limited. Competitive CPU heavy titles like Counter-Strike and Valorant benefit a lot from large L3 cache. Another case where the X3D shines is when your GPU hands the CPU a huge amount of data to chew on. For instance, if you're running something like an RTX 5080, but playing at 1080p, you'll see the X3D advantage much more clearly. However, as you raise resolution, the GPU starts shouldering more of the workload. At 1440p and especially 4K, the CPU load goes down and the GPU becomes the main bottleneck. That's why at higher resolutions, you'll often see chips like the 9800X3D and even something like a 7600X producing similar results. The X3D cache advantage fades as the GPU becomes the limiter. So who should consider an X3D if you mainly play esports style titles or you run a very powerful GPU at lower resolutions, X3D chips can be an excellent choice. If you want to balance, decent gaming and strong rendering, look at the 9000 series X3D chips instead. But if rendering performance matters a lot to you, avoid the earlier X3D models. They were architecturally optimized for gaming, not rendering. Third CPU that you should avoid is AMD Ryzen 9 7900 X3D and 7950X3D. These chips were hyped as the greatest gaming processors at one point, but the reality was a bit disappointing. The X3D variants of Ryzen 9 chips can improve gaming performance due to their large cache, but they usually fall behind in rendering and multi-core production workloads when compared to their non-X3D counterparts. The main selling points are high core counts and big caches, but in practice, the design introduces problems. Here's the technical reason. Modern Ryzen chips are made from CCDs, core complex dies, and the number and arrangement of CCDs matters. Single CCD designs generally have an advantage in gaming because all cores are on one die, and internal communication is simpler and faster. When a processor uses two CCDs, you add inter-CCD communication overhead. That latency and complexity can cause stability and performance drops in some workloads, especially latency-sensitive gaming scenarios. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D has a single CCD, and that's why it often performs better in games than the dual CCD 7950X3D, despite the latter's higher specs on paper. The dual CCD layout in Ryzen 9 models creates internal communication issues that can negatively affect real-world performance. So if you were thinking of buying the 7900X3D or 7950X3D specifically for gaming, I would instead suggest the non-X3D 7900X or 7950X variants or the 9000 series chips which show better architectural balance between gaming and production. Alright, those were the three I'd avoid today. Now let's switch over to the C CPUs I do recommend. First up we have the Ryzen 5 5600. If you are staying on AM4, the Ryzen 5 
600 is basically the GOAT of price to performance. It delivers excellent gaming and decent production performance for the price. One important distinction to understand, the difference between the 5600 and the 5600X is mostly about cooling headroom and out of the box boost. The 5600X tends to need a better cooler to realize its full potential, while the Ryzen 5 5600 performs extremely well even with the stock fan. The performance gap is only a few frames in many games, often around a 2 FPS difference, and you can easily overclock a 5600 a bit to get close to 5600X levels. For budget and mid-range users on AM4, the 5600 remains one of the best choices. At number 2 is Intel Core i5-13400F. This chip is a great middle ground, where the 12400F competes with the Ryzen 5 5600, the i5-13400F lines up well, versus the Ryzen 5 7500F and even the 7600 in some workloads. One key advantage of the 13400F is the LGA1700 platform supports both DDR4 and DDR5, so you can build a competent system using cheaper DDR4 memory and a more affordable motherboard. You don't need DDR5 to get very good performance unless you're going for a higher-end i7 or i9 build. Beware of silly choices like pairing a low-end CPU like the i3-12100F with expensive DDR5 RAM. That's just wasting money. Instead, picking the 13400F and a DDR4 board gives great value. The 13400F has moved up to a 10-core, 16-thread configuration, giving it much better multi-threaded performance than earlier i5s. One caveat, neither the 13400F nor many of its close competitors are great with the stock cooler. You'll want to plan on a better cooler if you want sustained peak performance without thermal throttling. At last, we have the Ryzen 7 9700X. This is my favorite AM5 chip right now. It probably gives the best value for its price among AM5 processors. The 9000 series architecture improved production and rendering performance a lot, and the 9700X benefits from that. It's not overpriced, it has a healthy core count for modern workloads, and with a few small tuning changes, you can push its gaming performance closer to what you'd see out of a 7800X3D. The only area where the 7800X3D maintains a distinct edge is in eSports titles that benefit strongly from very high cache sizes. In most other situations, the 9700X solves the drawbacks that people complain about with earlier X3D chips while giving much better all-round performance. For people who want a balanced gaming plus rendering chip on AM5 at a fair price, the 9700X is very hard to beat. So that's it. Three processors I'd avoid, and three I'd happily recommend for most builds. Which one would you pick for your next system? Drop your pick in the comments. If you found this useful, like and subscribe so I can make more detailed breakdowns like this. See you in the next video.